The final piece of the Rugby World Cup semi-final puzzle is solved today as host Japan go up against South Africa as this very young rivalry between these two sides continues on in the Rugby World Cup 2019. Only one can go through and face Wales in semi-final number two. We find out who will be today as Japan go up against South Africa. Hello everyone and welcome back along to your home of rugby and this quarter-final number four versus Japan and South Africa. The Japanese have pretty much kept things as they were from their final pool match against Scotland. The only change to starting 15 is Yamanaka coming in to the number 15 jumper in the place of Will Tupo. Other than that, the starting 15 is exactly the same. You expect more big performances from guys like Shota Horia in the front row. Thompson and Moore have been exceptional in the middle of the pack. And of course, one of the best back rows going around the World Cup this year, Leach, Lamasanche and Hermino in the back row together. What they will need is more explosive ability from guys like Fukuoka and Matsushima on the outside wings with the expert play from Tamura, Nakamura and Lafaili to put them in spots to get the jobs done. They beat them four years ago and it's almost become a drinking game as to how often you'll hear that over the course of this fixture. But this is a tough for us. This Japan side is also a better team. It could go either way, and the home crowd will be hoping that their team can get the job done again. Of course, the Springboks gained revenge on that fateful loss four years ago on Brighton, beating the Japanese in a Rugby World Cup build-up game a matter of weeks ago. That, though, is a completely different atmosphere to what we're going to see here today. This is Rugby World Cup quarter-final rugby, and there is only one result the Springboks want to get here. More rotation goes around the front row and Tauriel will start on the loose inside with Mbanambi, a hooker and Maholba on the tight end. Into the second row, more changes. Even it's a beat will start once again, but he's got a new partner, Lutiaga, on his shoulder. Kalisi, the toy and Bermuda remain in the back row. It's the outside backs are going to be in a lot of work, but Pippi and Colby have work to do to make sure Japan don't get that width on the ball and don't get the chances to score in the corners. The back line is all about defence. The forwards are where this game is going to be won as per usual. The old cliches are always the way the game goes. The Springboks will back themselves here to get the incentive in the pack and to push this Japanese side around. Will they be able to do it though? Can Japan lift for this big quarterfinal? Their first ever quarterfinal in a Rugby World Cup. We find out as kickoff is about to get underway. 18 minutes of action is coming your way. Stick around, don't go anywhere. Kickoff is about to get underway. So we are all set to go. It's Japan, of course, in the cherry red and white up against the Springboks in the green and white. We are good for kickoff. South Africa receiving and underway it goes. Tamura kicks it off short and Captain Saikalisi drags it in for the Springboks. And they'll set the ball up 10 meter line. Press break down the game. Fuck the clock has a little bit of a run, shows it, kicks ahead. And it bounces over the 22 into touch. Nothing Gamanaka can do about that one. Good kick. Fuck the clock. Showing the versatility, eyeing a little gap. And as it closes, just deposits it through. Japan on the back foot very early here. As a line out throw to Hottie and he goes to the back. And it's nicely pulled on by Moore. Tamura. Out wide they go. Nakamura dummies inside and loses the ball and picks up nicely. Then Lindy with a turnover. Inside the 22 now. Big chance to Levka. And Tawera runs and looks out wide. Andre Pollard puts it over the line. And a great start for the Springboks. Not the start that Japan were looking for, but that is a beautiful try of an early error from Nakamura. Picked up from his opposite, Delendi. And Antaro Era picks it up, draws defenders, flat ball out to Andre Pollard. And he slips in the tackle of Matsushima over the line. And puts it down to the left of the uprights. Tenth Antaro Era, the big man, the beast as they call him. Drawing a lot of attention on that little run he made off the back of the ruck. And that created plenty of room for this guy, Hunter Pollard, who grabs the first try of this fourth quarter final and he'll convert his own as well. 7 0, the Springboks lead. And that's the start they would have wanted. Take this crowd out of it, put themselves in control, and 
continue to dominate from there. Seven minutes in, seven points on the board. And Tamura is back to halfway. He kicks high this time, deep, deep down into South African territory. And Billy LaRue stops and changes directions. Got a little change of mix up there from Billy LaRue. He's kicked down to Matsushima, who's gone away to Tamura. Back there in support and isolated was Tamura. And another turnover to the Springboks, dominating the breakdown area very early on here. They go to their back line. Inside ball to Diago. Eventually goes to ground. Just outside the 22. Japan competing for the ball and turning it over as well. Big play there. Now, Nagari goes out wide. Nakamura again. Tamura into the middle of the park. He's half broken the line. Leroux comes up to meet him. And it's a chance for Lafayette. Big tackle there. Fully Leroux covering across. Puts him into touch. Tim Lafayette, dangerous on the outside, but couldn't find his speedsters. Line out to the spring box, they've dominated, but that's the first real glimpse of what Japan can do in this fixture. To the Agar it goes, to the back of the line out, and they drag it in, and they'll decide to move this forward. Now will wait to the back. And it's a good charge too. This is very good by South Africa. Up over halfway they go. Now Mahoba wants to use it. Gets it out to Mbibi. He's got no one to beat. Support for Miles. But Matsushima shuts it down. Quick ball. Mahoba. Numbers everywhere out here. There is 10 9 Tawera. Running free all by himself. One to beat. Decides to support. And Banami takes it aground. Five metres out. Good cover back to Yamanaka. Billy LaRue comes in. Guys, the short side, terrible play. Absolutely terrible play from Billy LaRue. How the Springboks didn't score from that last phase, I have no idea. But somehow, Japan survived. 7-0 after 21 minutes and to the back of Moore once again. And James Moore has been a standout. He's must have seen a one-on-one with Makas Oliver Pimpi who turns it over. Out, gets driven backwards and it's a touch around the breakdown. Not able to get rid of that ball quick enough there. Michael's order, Mapimpi. And another escape opportunity now for Japan. Hollier to throw to the back, and once again, it's who else but James Ford. Nagari gets it quickly off for many drills. This big kick straight down the throat of Billy LaRue. He's running the back and inside to Clara. Great ball to Delende, who cuts up to the 22. Delende support inside out. Diaga and Tawera on the 22. And the big man, 10 9 Tawera, just puts this to ground. LaRue in the line again, and this time Billy LaRue knocks on. Another escape for Japan, who really have been under the pump. Here's Matsushima, away it goes. And a run from Luke Thompson. Goes more sideways than it did forward. The advantage is still on the side here of Japan. Leach away there tomorrow. And the kick away referee says no advantage there at all for the knock on by Billy LaRue. And we will go back for the scrum. Bind. Set. Nagari to feet. Just inside is 22. Strong scrum here from Japan. This is where the spring will want to upset the rhythm. On the break, Blossoms at set piece. Himino sits it at the back and Nagari goes away to Tamura, who tries to step through, but he's put down. Big tackle there in the middle of the park. Quick ball Nagari away to Nakamura, and he decides that he'll do the kicking instead for the Japanese. As he's for the Leroux running a bag, all the bit of interest. Great pass, look on your arm. Up to the 22 he goes for taking it to touch. Great defense there by Japan, scrambling and covering across. Cutting off all the angles. Another line out and back to their 22 so quickly after escaping. And back to Moore it goes. Here's Tamura. The sun looks wide and it's Nakamura who's knocked it on again. Second knock on in succession here for the Japanese. Nakamura's made two. Here is Atari, our biggest scrum half of the world. Sets it up. 20 outs. Um, Running, good ball out wide, here's Peter Stead to Toy, an advantage once again not taken. And another knock on the second by Nakamura. Crouch. Gives Fine. the Springboks a massive opportunity on the stroke of half time Set. to double their lead. There goes half time. Scrum feed from Fafta Clark. And the 
back and waits it. Of course, Dangry Merlin, but the clock takes it from his feet. Just sits to Paul Ardbeck inside the toy back to Mahalba. They come backwards a bit near the spring box. Well read set piece by Japan. Dilende, wide ball. Marcus on Amapupi to the corner of go. Amapupi will score. What a finish from Marcus on Amapupi. He is an expert finisher in the corner. And you cannot take your eyes off the work of Marcus on Amapupi. Dilende took it up. And a brilliant ball out wide. He spotted it for us to see it, and you've got to give all the credit here to the number 12, Damon Zelandi, and that was a beautiful pass, flat away from Matsushima, who should have been marking him. And sadly for Japan, Yamanaka could not cover that space in time to cut him off. Andre Pollard, who was in the last phase in the bottom of a rug, will have the conversion attempt. Way out on the left for Pollard, that is a great kick. And the lead is doubled now, 14 points to nil. But it's South Africa all over this opening half for this final quarter final. And they look odds on with this performance to be going into semi final rugby. But still 40 minutes to go here, Japan can certainly fire back. And when you look at the way these stats have gone, 27% of possession, just 19% of territory. That is in no way stats that is going to get you into a World Cup semi-final fixture. Just one line break, the Springboks have made five, and they'll be wanting even more from that sort of numbers as well. Just two tries from those explosive opportunities. 14 nil it is at halftime, and the two teams back out on the field, ready to go, second 40 minutes. Underway we go, Andre Pollard, try to his name, a good first half performance, kicks it straight to Shotoharia for Japan. Now at the back waiting is Kazuki Yamino, it goes short to Anaki, who's knocked it off. Nice. Another error from Japan, being their Achilles heel as he is in Manami, looking out wide, Pollard goes short, and again as the Kanyoha looks for a big play to Cesar Colby, who has shut down very well. Communication there between Arm and Colby, not the best as the two cross paths got in each other's way and allowed the Japanese defence to cover both of them for the price of one. Horia again goes to Moore, he's been the money man, it's James Moore at the back for Japan. Now they got to the back line, number Sante tries to step his way through with a good tackle. Nice. Inside of 22, shuts him down in the spring box, oh, blow over the top, numbers not there for Japan, out oh, wide they go again, Mapipi beats one, gives to Arm, and the cutting Arm sets it inside the 22, left hand side of the field, big chance for the third try. Delendi goes to Imanami and he's been a step to his short to his captain, Kulisi does well, getting off line, back to Delendi again. Now they move towards centre field. Diaga to his right. Khaleesi, big numbers out here. Mahoma goes quickly. Turns to Colby. It's an instant replay on the right-hand side, not the left. First half, Marcus Olimapupi did exactly that. A beautiful pass from Dialendi. This time, it is the big man, Franz Mahoma. Look at this ball. Khaleesi to Franz Mahoma. Then a beautiful pass. Turns to Colby. Straight line sprint. And he's in for his first try in the third for the Springboks. Luttiaga spotted the space. Kalexi went quickly. Then so did Mahoba. Nakamura was still trying to catch up with the tight end prop. And the ball was deposited to that man who is quick as the wind. And puts a big five-pointer on the board for the Springboks. Pollard now from the right-hand side. He's been... Expert from the left, and he shows no difference on the right hand side either. A great kick from Andre Pollard. Next to Springboks now up 21 points to nil over Japan. Well, for a side that has scored points for fun at the Rugby World Cup, Japan are struggling to put anything against the Springbok defence. It's a high kick and to this right hand side, and Chess and Colby climbs high. He's ripped up from Nagari. What a play with a little scrum half. Japan get a little bit going their way. Finally, a bit of territory. Finally, a bit of possession. And I expect Tamura, indeed, he will kick this to touch. 
gets it just 10 meters short of the spring box line great chance to attack now for japan they would love to put some points on the board a couple of quick tries and this one is wide open again Korea to throw and it is again to more. He is really on everything tonight for Japan. Nakamura big ball wide enough, Ailey. It's another one. Matsushima. No one marking the wide man. And that's an easy run in for the speedster. The brave blossoms hit back. And the crowd are going bananas. Simple play from the set piece. Tamura, Nakamura, Lafaele, Matsushima, try time Japan through the backs and no one out on the wings for the Springboks no one covering that wide winger and you saw struggling to do was Mpimpi he had two players Billy LaRue wasn't swinging around and I left the man over and this man Masushima certainly knows his way to the try line he has a pile of tries already in this World Cup, does Kotaro Matsushima. Here is Yutamura with a conversion very similar to the last of Pollard. And a very good kick from Tamura, showing this Japanese side is not to be outdone. Not an open play and not from the tee either. Well, a little bit back now for the home team. Andre Pollard kicks off and... The Springboks need to be careful, they don't just get out of hand at the moment because if they do let another try go in for Japan, this could be catastrophic, but don't look that way. It's Fluff to Clark, turn the ball over, and now the Springboks attack back to the 22. Nice. Ball security from the Japanese has been woeful in this game. Wide and um, could have gone to Colby, chose to go back into Tarawera, now goes to NTV. Now they go to Colby, Colby to the corner, big tackle, Yamanaka! Had to be made as well. Chesson Colby. Thought he was in for the corner again. But an excellent fun fight in the corner from the fullback. Just saves the day for Japan. Lanaki goes back in. And it's once again Yamanaka who kicks the touch. And he gets the ball up towards the 10 meter line. Good clearance there from the fullback. Rohi Yamanaka has been heavily involved here for Japan. Here's the Banami. Close to the middle with Mutiaga. Grabs it in and he pulls it down and looks the ball once again. But it doesn't go their way. The spring box. So they use the backs and into midfield. The Kanyua looking out wide. They're leaving the ball back inside. Colby finding a little bit more space in the middle of the park. Right center field now. It's the beak having a goal. And he's taken down. Another good tackle there. Anarchy's been in everything tonight. Here's the loose end prop. Um, to Umbanabi. Good pass to Yaga, and he gets it outside. Back to Captain Saikulisi. Delendi. Back to Mahoba. Oh, Mahoba's been cut in half. That is a massive tackle. And it comes back. Fuck the clerk. Oh, he's monstered as well. Stepping up again now. Japan defensively pulling in some huge hits and then turn it over as well that's massive and there is off Ailey Ayanaki getting in the behind the field as well looks to go wide Fukuoka no back and field and Michael Lynch will scamper away from the chase of Peter Steph to die. and Captain Lynch will score and Japan are back in the game What a little play, straight off the turnover. The big man on the loose end side, Kaita Ayanaki, beautiful work, finding Kiki Fukuoka. And he is dangerous, he drew the attention, got hammered off the ball as well, did Fukuoka. What an offload, oh my word. Ayanaki just put that beautifully in the hands of Fukuoka. In the tackle, squirts it out. And then the little winger does equally as impressive, finding his captain, Michael Leach, for the finish away from his opposition back rowers. The back line was all committed elsewhere. And with three minutes to go, Tamura puts over the extra two. It's swimming on 14, and it is game on for the final few minutes.
Well played, Japan. That's all you can say about this, the heart, the passion. The adaptability. To be down by 21 to nil, out of this game, and then fire your way back has been oppressive. Nagari drags it in for the brave Bossoms, looking to be extra brave as well. There's more. That's true. Fukuoka to his land, goes only. Back into James Moore. Tim in line. Japan looking to break hearts. Over the halfway, Tim in line as well. Now it's Tamura trying to force his way through. Good tackle. Japan hold on though. Now here's Ku. Jimon Ku. Getting nicely up the field and needs a few friends. Needs a lot of friends here to hang on. And he does. Himino goes to his right and just one out. Rugby going straight off. Pick and go from Himino. Here's Leach now. Anaki changes his mind. Going back to Ku. Back to Nagari. He was waiting for the next breakdown. He's been hammered for his troubles. And Japan is struggling to keep hold of this ball. But they do enough again. Moore. James Moore to his left. Oh, beautiful ball to Tamura. Don't to Anaki again. Fence off Khaleesi. Almost gets away. Nagari. Oh, high tackle on Nagari from Atendo and Tawera. And he's going to spend the rest of the game in the bin. Yellow card. Hand was in the pocket. And Tendo and Tawera is out of here. Time is up. Attack. Tamura. He does that. Goes to his big prop. He's been brilliant. Lafaeli steps. Goes outside. Big chance here. Marashima for the corner. He's in touch. And it is all over. What a finish! South Africa survived! All the pressure in the world was firmly on the Springboks as Japan come roaring back into this game. What an exceptional finish! A team that has really made world rugby proud have finally come to an end. 14 21 tries to lead to Matsushima. Both converted by Tamura. It's Japan's 14 points. As for South Africa, Pollard, Mapupi, and Colby with one each. And Andre Pollard converting all three tries and a flawless night off the tee from both of the team's fly halves. Three tries to two. Not much in it at full time. At the end of the day, the stats, well, not like they were at the halftime break. We've seen Japan with very little ball, very little territory. They have come storming back over half throughout the whole match now position and just under half of the territory as well. They'll be very proud of that second half. They storm back hard. They storm back well, but just not enough to get the job done. Five line breaks, but it was the Springboks with nine. They really proved the difference and say cut things up in that opening half of the game. 21 14, the full time score will see South Africa go through to play Wales in the semi final. That one will be a cracker. Of course, on the other side of the draw will be England versus New Zealand, and they are two very mouth watering prospects of games in the semi finals of the Rugby World Cup. That is my time done for today, though. Thank you all for tuning and watching. I hope you enjoyed this final quarter-final matchup between Japan and South Africa. It is now one run in World Cups, but it is now 2-1 South Africa in meetings in any competition. This is a new rivalry that is becoming all the more enjoyable for World Rugby, but it is South Africa that go on to the semi-finals. I'll see you all for those matches in the next weekend, but until then, thanks for watching, and as always, take care.